Hello, and what we're going to do now is 7b. This is uh, unit 7, talking about ocean circulation, circulation. And we're going to talk about gyres and formation of uh, currents that actually are in the ocean. And if you take a look at this picture down here, we actually have five gyres that affect the planet. We have one here in the northern Atlantic. We have one in the South Atlantic. We have northern Pacific, South Pacific, and one in the Indian Ocean. And we have this... Uh, long west wind west wind drift that actually is the longest fastest at least right in here um, largest current that actually goes around antarctica so these are large these gyres and like my last name this is how you pronounce this large circular flows they're clockwise in the northern hemisphere going this way this way and this way and they're like in the North Atlantic, and they're counterclockwise this way, this way, and this way in the Southern Hemisphere. And there are four main gyre uh, currents in each one. There's one on the um, eastern side of the continent, or the western side of the gyre, on the northern side of the gyre, the eastern side of the gyre, and the southern. And that's true for all of these. And what they end up being is really good trash collectors. Um, there's the largest one is actually in the northern Pacific. Um, but basically what happens is the water gets thrown towards the center of each of these gyres, which we'll talk about on a later slide. And anything that's floating, it's called flotsam and jetsam. Um, basically anything and everything that floats uh, gets concentrated in these things. Okay, here are two pictures of a couple of birds. That uh, This is a seabird that picked up plastic, even a bit lighter. And eventually clogs up its digestive system, uh, probably causing death of the bird. And the sad thing is when this bird gets picked apart by carnivores, um, detritivores, uh, this plastic will get released so it can cause more problems. This is a snapping turtle you can see June 2000. Uh, somehow got a piece of plastic around it when it was small. And it actually uh, shrunk uh, this midsection of this turtle. And eventually, like right now, it can eat. And uh, that eventually will actually shut down its circulatory, respiratory, digestive sy system. And whatever gets there first is going to cause all kinds of problems. Five Islands garbage forming over 35 years. Um, this is a link. Um, and uh, you guys can actually ta uh, type these into YouTube. I'm not going to show you because it actually makes my video contain copyright information. And I don't like to see that on my videos. But this is a picture uh, soon after the tsunami in Japan, uh, two years ago, I think 2010, 2000, actually probably 2013. And this is all material that was actually pushed off the off the island of Japan into the ocean when the tsunami went onto the land and then came back out, bringing all this stuff out there. And this is what floats. There's a lot of things like cars and other things that are in the water, but this is pretty much what the inside of these gyres look like. Um, the, the eastern gyre, they actually think, is about the size of Texas. Massive. And here's a picture of a poor little sea turtle being brought up. And it's got a net, and I don't know what else uh, in it, but it's got a lot of material. And uh, probably uh, when it was swimming in the ocean, this acted like a parachute and slowed it down. A very strong turtle to be able to survive like that. Ekman spiral, Ekman transport. Ekman uh, actually identified first that when the wind blows in a certain direction, the net motion of the water is 90 degrees. So here's the wind and here's the Ekman transport. But it's called a spiral because the water right underneath the wind goes 45 degrees to the right. In the northern hemisphere, it'd be 45 degrees left in the southern hemisphere. And the water down below it goes 45 degrees to it, and then 45 degrees to it. And eventually it goes all the way down. But if we add all these vectors, uh, which you'll learn in physics, we get a direction of Ekman transport about 90 degrees uh, to the right of the wind in the northern hemisphere. Ekman transport moves surface water about 90 degrees to the right of the wind. That's net motion in the northern hemisphere. And about 90 degrees to the left in the southern hemisphere. And that's called Ekman spiral and Ekman transport. 
Ekman transport or Ekman flow actually causes upwelling. Uh, this is the southern hemisphere. And now you can see the water is actually flowing to the left of the wind, 90 degrees. And as we get a southerly wind, um, we actually get water being pulled away from the coastline. And what that does is allows nutrient-rich cold water to move up and causes what's called upwelling. Upwelling is a biological, sorry, this Ekman transport moves the seawater off brings cooler nutrient-rich water vertically toward the sea surface and it's a high biological productivity area and if you take a look at this picture these colors that are there um, plankton pigment concentration the more plankton plankman pigment there is the more plankton there is and the more plankton you have the bigger fish you have coming into the area and you can see this area which is uh, right off the coast of South America has these really bright colors showing you lots of uh, pigment concentration. Downwelling exactly the opposite. Southern hemisphere now we've got a north wind, water gets pushed towards the coast and actually causes what's called downwelling. This is actually a nutrient poor area. Bring the water that's nutrient poor, bringing these purple almost no plankton whatsoever toward the surface and actually causing all kinds of biologic problems. Langmore circulation is caused by wind direction and moving to the right in one area and then that actually moves it toward another area and causes area of downwelling and upwelling. And the downwelling area actually concentrates material and you can see it will actually bring converging and diverging sections, wind blown over calm oceans, you can see very few waves, and alternating rows of upwelling and downwelling. And this actually collects bubbles, which usually means protein that gets uh, moved around with the water and actually into the air in the water and actually makes these bubbles. It also is called flotsam and jetsam, which is it carries anything that can find floating. So you could find bottles and big lighters and all kinds of things. And one of the really big plastic uh, scares now is actually those little gel uh, um, particles that are in like uh, soap and shampoo. I think uh, Proactive actually has these in there. And that what gets washed down the sink, it gets into the Chesapeake Bay, goes out to the Atlantic, and literally tons and tons and tons of these small little, um, I don't even know what they're called, uh, the little, little particles, the exfoliating particles that you find in soaps and shampoos and other things. Subtropic gyres. Uh, gyres actually have what's called geostrophic flow. And what we actually get from this is we get Coriolis effect, which is actually moving things to the right in the northern hemisphere. And we also get gravity once we get these hills. Now, this it looks like it's a very large hill on the ocean. It really is only about three feet higher than what it is at the coastlines. Ekman transport piles a hill of seawater at about 30 degrees north in the Atlantic and the Pacific and 30 degrees south, the Atlantic, Pacific, and the Indian, and actually makes these hills of water. The flow um, actually piles the water, and the water flows downhill due to gravity, and it actually concentrates on this side because the Earth is rotating in this direction. It concentrates on the western side and actually spreads out on the eastern side, and what we actually get is we get a much stronger flow as we're concentrating, like putting your thumb over a hose, concentrates the water, so it's a much faster, much more uh, powerful flow on the western side of an ocean than it is over on the eastern side of the ocean. And it throws material as the flow goes this direction. Um, uh, Ickman current actually puts things to the right in the northern hemisphere, and it's actually a really good place to collect, again, this flotsam and jetsam. And here's another uh, Scripps Oceanographic North, Northern Ocean Gyre, which is a, a video of a um, Scripps Oceanography section actually going up to the Northern Gyre and what they find. And again, I don't want to put copyrighted information in there. Western intensity. Um, we actually get a higher intensity of current in the western section of this gyre than we do in the eastern. It gives a steeper slope, a much more gentle slope on the eastern, which is going to concentrate water on this side which gives a much faster flow on this side than it does on this side. The Gulf Stream, much more narrow, much more deep, and the Canary Current on the eastern side of the North Atlantic Gyre, uh, much more narrow, much wider current, even though it's moving the same amount of water. And then inside it's called the Sargasso Sea, which is uh, the trash collector area. 
surface currents. Uh, pattern similar to the major ocean basins. Northern gyres move clockwise. Southern gyres move counterclockwise. In the uh, Antarctic circulation, what we get is the Antarctic circulate, uh, circumpolar con uh, current. Blah, 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 blah. And what this basically does is actually moves this water in a clockwise direction. It's called the westward drift also. It's the greatest volume of water on the planet. It uh, connects main oceans. It goes in the what, southern part of the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific oceans. We have what's called the eastern drift, which is inside of that, caused by Ekman transport, and it actually moves inside. It's a counterclockwise swell. Uh, it also has Antarctic divergent upwelling because of these uh, uh, flows. We actually get water moving away from Antarctica, which brings nutrient cold water from down below, which is uh, probably the most biological active area on the planet. And you can see all those nice bright yellows, oranges, and reds. The North Atlantic circulation, uh, it is a clockwise direction, north equatorial current which is moving water towards the west. As the Gulf Stream, which moves it up toward the north, and these numbers, I'm not sure what the unit is, but if you take a look at the numbers on this side, are much higher than the numbers on this side. It's also much, when you take a look at that small little circle, it's much more concentrated on the western side. So the Gulf of Mexico tends to move faster, also tends to be a deeper current than you see over here for the Canary Current. The North Atlantic Current, which is moving water to the east, and then we have the Canary Current, which actually moves it towards the south. The Gulf Stream and the North Atlantic Currents bring very warm water all the way up to Europe. And Ireland, which actually has palm trees growing on this side of the continent because it's so warm. South Atlantic, we have the South Equatorial Current moving water to the west. We have the Brasilia Current, which actually moves water towards the south. We have the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, or the West Wind Drift, moving it off to the east. And then it comes up, and that's the greatest, again, volume of water on the planet. And then it connects to all three main oceans. And we have the Bengula Current, which actually brings the water up towards the north. Um, the colors, orange water bringing warm water down, and then blue water, cold, bringing it all the way up. Cools the tropics and warms the polar areas. North Pacific. Um, we start with the North Equatorial Current, bringing water to the west. Kurosho Current, actually bringing water north. We have the east, uh, the North Pacific Current, bringing water towards the east. And we have the California Current, bringing water towards the south. And you can see very productive areas on the west coast of the United States because of this cold, nutrient-rich water. Uh, this is the North Pacific Group Gyre. So as the water moves this way, it moves to the right in the Northern Hemisphere which puts up this dry gyre, um, concentrates water inside here, as well as all the trash. And we have a strong equatorial countercurrent here as well. So the north equatorial bringing water for the gyre and the equatorial countercurrent bringing water the opposite direction. South Pacific Ocean, same sort of thing. We have the south equatorial current bringing water to the west. We have the East Australian Current, the East EAC, bringing water along Australia, bringing it south. We have the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, or the West Wind Drift, bringing water towards the east. And then we have the Peru, or the Humboldt Current, bringing it up towards the east. And I don't know what happened there, but we're going to stop. And those are the currents. And basically, south, we go counterclockwise, and north, we go clockwise. Uh, we bring water up usually on the west coast of the ocean, um, on the northern hemisphere, and also the west coast of the ocean in the southern hemisphere. We bring cold, nutrient-rich water up towards the tropics, and we bring warm, nutrient-poor water down toward the poles. So we have a temperature change as well as other things. The western side usually tends to be stronger, faster current, deeper, and the western side, or the eastern side, the western side of the continents the eastern side of the ocean tend to be much wider. And it did it again. Okay, thanks for stopping by. Adios.